Oh, hey, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of game design. This is the third and hopefully final video of going from Make Human to Mixamo to Unreal Engine. And let's see where we are. We are in Unreal Engine, and we are hooking up our animation blueprint. We went to our idle run state, right? We created speed, and we have this event graph. Um, I was trying to do this really quickly <clears throat> for folks who've already used Unreal Engine before, but I can now take the time to kind of say the animation blueprint is split up into two major areas, the event graph and the I, um, the animation blueprint, or the, I'm sorry, the anim graph. The animation blueprint is made up of the event graph and the anim graph. Um, the event graph is kind of like the event graphs that you use in all the other blueprints. The anim graph is what makes this a little bit different. It's what drives the overall animation um, poses, right? The overall pose of the character. And it's driven by all of the things that are happening every moment of the game. So in this moment, what we're doing is every single tick, we are setting the variable speed to the length of the vector of its velocity. So if its velocity is zero inches per, or uh, centimeters per second, zero, we're getting the velocity at zero, the length of that vector is zero. Um, and then so as we increase in speed, the vector gets longer. And as that vector gets longer, that represents a faster speed. So we're setting that to a higher number. This speed then is, is in effect, driving this state machine and remember it's driving the blend space you remember what's in that blend space it's driving the position of this green thing as it goes from 0 to 375 so that's how our character is going to go from idling to running all right let's but this isn't good enough because we have um, that's just one of the states in fact, we could go ahead and hook this up. Let's go ahead and do that. That might be fun. Let's hook this up to our character. Um, now, if we push play, Unreal Engine doesn't know we want to use Farmer Bob yet. We haven't told it yet. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click this third person character. We are going to edit the third person character over in the world outliner. Now that's going to open it up. If you didn't use it that way, you could have also found the third person character by going to third person BP, twirl that down, click on blueprints, and see the third person character here, and double click it. It's the same thing. What we're going to do is go into the viewport, select this mesh, and what we're going to do is change the skeletal mesh to our idol. Yes, I'm so annoyed I brought this guy in and his name is Idol. Ugh. Okay, here we go. It's a little smaller and I wasn't counting on that. So let's go ahead and make him a little bit bigger in our scale function. So let's set that to 1.5. How about 1.4? That looks good. So now all of these are going to be 1.4. 1.4. Now, if we were to just compile this and save it, it doesn't know that we want to use the animation blueprint, and so he's just kind of standing there, and he doesn't do any of the animations. Oh, look at him. OK, so then what do we do with this third-person character blueprint? Well, we have to click on him again. And under animation on the right, under details, again, we're selecting the mesh. Animation mode is use animation blueprint. Um, and what we're doing is anim class, we are using Farmer Bob anim BP. That's what I made. That's the animation blueprint I made. Okay, there he goes. Now he's in his idle stance. And now when I play, there he's idling. As I move, he goes into his little run. Now when I jump, he also stays running. And that is the problem because that does not look believable. Ooh, that's such a scary man. OK, so how do we go ahead and fix that? Well, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to go back to our Farmer Bob folder where we have our animation blueprint. Luckily, I named it AnimBP at the end, so I can always find it. Double click it. And this is where we're going to add functionality to from this idle to run. So let's going to drag off from the edge, 
let go and say add a state. Well, what's that state going to be? Jump. That's what it's going to be. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and set up the rest of our stuff here. After it jumps, I'm going to add another state, and that is going to be called jump loop. After that, I'm going to let's go ahead and add another state, and that state is going to be called idle. And we're going to add this to here uh, to circle it all up. So every time you jump, you're going to be jumping up, then you're going to be falling, and then when you're finished falling and hit the ground, you're going to jump, go into idle, and then you're going to just go right into idle to run again. Okay. Uh, we might not need this ending, but I'm going to keep it here for now. Just because this is what I did. Well, you don't need to know about that. You don't need to know about that. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> what needs to happen? I guess we can go in here and do the animations first. Number one, I'm going to go into jump. And I'm going to grab the jump animation and drag it in here. And just bloopity bloop. Uh, do it up. <clears throat> yes, I know it will never go there. No worries. Let's go back out of that by clicking New State Machine up here. And come into Jump Loop. And this is where we're going to have the falling animation. Oh, yeah, I should probably call it Falling Loop. Let's do that. Let's call this Falling Loop by clicking on it and going into the graph node name Falling Loop. That's much better. Now back to idle. Let's go ahead and grab our idle animation and hook it up. Now, the reason why I have all of these errors here <clears throat> is because it needs to figure out how we are going, like when do we go to jump. And the way we go to jump is when we are in air. As soon as we're in air, we're going to go into jump, OK? This is a one-way street here. If you're in idle to run anywhere and you suddenly get lost, you get into the air, it's going to push you into the jump animation. You actually saw that, oh, in the previous example. I should have, I should have shown it. Oh, well. Not going to do it now. Um, so what I want to do, though, is figure out, how do I know when I'm in air? And so the way we're going to do that is go to the event graph. Again, grab a note out from the pawn, uh, get pawn owner. And we're going to get character. OK, now I have to pause it. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll show you how I'm going to figure this out. Uh, character movement. That's what I'm looking for. This character movement section, there is a thing called air. I think there's a thing. Am I in the air? Um, let me try it. Get oh. character. Character movement. Get movement. Get movement component. That's the one I want. Uh, so I'm going to go to pawn input. Sorry, it's not where I. Uh, forget everything I said about the third person character. It's get movement component. From he here, we're going to say um, in air. Let's see, air. Hold on a moment. Of course, of course, it wasn't is in air, it's is falling. So I'm going to grab it out of get movement component. I'm going to say is falling. And this is a Boolean. And it's actually a built-in It's a built -in thing that Epic Games did for us. Thank you, Epic Games. And so it's like, hey, are you falling? Um, yes or no. And so what we're going to do is promote this to a variable called in air. In air. Um, I'm going to call it is in air. That means it's true. When it's true, it's true. And we're going to set this here. Oh, dang it all. Um, <laughs> no. Hold on. I have to think about my booleans. Oh, yes. Duh. If it's falling, it's in the air. Sorry. That totally makes sense. I love that I did that. Now we're going to go back to this new state machine. And we have to say it. Now, when is it going to be jumping? Well, this little thing is the rule. So I'm going to double click this little rule here. 
And we're going to say, when in air is true, that's when we are going to jump. I can, oh, I compiled it, but I don't have a lot of stuff figured out. Okay, so that will work eventually, don't worry. So as soon as it's true, we're gonna, we're gonna jump into the air. Now, how do we get out of the jump and go to the falling loop? When it's jump is finished, it's going to go into the falling loop. Now, how do you know when the jump is finished? Well, we're gonna come here and we are going to use a fairly tricky thing. Let's see, I'm going to look for, um, so what we're going to do is reach into the joyful jump and figure out how much time is remaining. And we can do that by right clicking anywhere in here and just start typing joyful jump. Now, if you grabbed a different animation, then you won't, yours won't be joyful jump. Mine is the name of the jump. And I'm going to choose time remaining ratio there. And now this grabs the time remaining. And what I'm going to do is say, hey, is that less than? a certain thing, and it's gonna say, is it less than 0 0.1? And if it is true that it's less than 0 0.1, that's just a tiny little bit of time remaining in the jump, then it's gonna suddenly jump to the falling loop, remember? And we already hooked that up, so we don't need to do that. Now, when does it go to idle? Well, it goes to idle when it's not in the air anymore. So we're gonna grab is in air, get it. Now we're not going to link it up here because we need to know what it's not in the air. So we type in not boolean. And so that means, hey, if that's not in air, then it will enter into the next one. Oops, not this one. It'll enter into the next idle. And how does it enter into, enter into idle to run? You know what? I actually don't think I need that. I actually think I can come into here and yep sorry guys sorry I deleted that and this one will be is in air um, and do the not boolean and that should work mm, mm, stop it I'm just trying to make you pretty there now when I compile that it should work out fine and I'm going to go into my map. I'm more running, I'm running, I'm running, and I'm gonna jump. There I go. Oh, okay. And so that's not quite working out the way I wanted to. This is the first time it hasn't worked out right. Um, and so I'm going to pause you while I figure out what's wrong. <clears throat> All right, I figured out what was wrong with it in my ant jump animation. I'm so dumb. I did clip the beginning, but what happens is he jump, he falls to the ground and and just kind of sits there for so many frames. But I don't want that. I want him to kind of because I don't know how long he's going to be jumping if he jumps down a chasm. He should be falling. So I'm going to figure out where he's actually. Okay, that's. 15th frame is where I want him to stop jumping and I'm going to right click the timeline and say remove frame 16 to 43. I should have just done that anyway. There's his jump. That's perfect. That's all I want. Let's go ahead and save that. Now when I'm in here, see I did all sorts of stuff here. Now I'm going to keep it to where it was. I have my jump. And now it's going to calculate when that jump is almost over and go to the falling. Let's see if it works. Whee! There's a little bit of a clip there, and that's just because I didn't quite set my animations to blend. I'd probably blend those. Oh, that's a good idea. How would I blend that? Oh, well. This is over. Uh, what I'd probably do is figure out how to just make those seamlessly join anyway okay okay uh that's it i hope you enjoyed this again this was going from make human to mixamo to mixamo to unreal engine to create your very own customizable original ish 
third-person player character. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye!